वेलकम फ्रेंड्स लेट अस कंटिन्यू टू स्टडी चैप्टर नंबर थ्री ऑन माय यूट्यूब चैनल काइंडली लाइक शेयर एंड सब्सक्राइब माय यूट्यूब चैनल द टॉपिक्स इंक्लूडेड इन टूडेज लेक्चर आर फॉर्मेशन ऑफ स्टीम एंड टाइप ऑफ स्टीम स्पेसिफिक एंथलपी एंड स्पेसिफिक वॉल्यूम ऑफ स्टीम सो लेट अस यू कैन से रिव्यू वट वी हैव स्टडीड इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर कंसिडर वी हैव वन किलोग्राम ऑफ वॉटर फिल्ड इन पिस्टन एंड सिलिंडर असेंबली प्रेशर ऑन द वॉटर इज वन एटमोस्फेरिक एंड ड्यू टू दैट सेचुरेशन टेम्परेचर इज हंड्रेड डिग्री सेल्सियस वेन वी सप्लाई द हीट देन द हीटिंग ऑफ वॉटर टेक्स प्लेस एंड एट पॉइंट बी टेम्परेचर ऑफ वॉटर इज हंड्रेड डिग्री सेंटीग्रेड एंड दिस काइंड ऑफ वॉटर इज नोन एज द सेचुरेटेड लिक्विड If we continue to supply the heat, then partially water is converted into steam. So here at point C, we are going to get mixture of water and steam. Again at that time, temperature of steam is 100 degree Celsius. That is the saturation temperature, and this kind of steam is known as the wet steam. If we continue to heat, we will get the point number D, where All water is converted into steam, so it is filled up with the only steam, and at that time also temperature of steam is under degree Celsius, and this type of steam is known as the dry steam. If we continue to heat again, then steam will be or dry steam will be heated more and more, and it will become superheated steam, and the temperature of steam at that point E is. More than saturation temperature, and it is known as the superheated steam. So now let us study all these points one by one in detail. Let us take uh, the state A. At state A, water is initially at zero degree Celsius, volume is V W, and the water is at temperature zero degree Celsius. Some weight is placed on the piston and due to that pressure or the constant pressure is acting on the water let us draw the temperature versus enthalpy diagram for this and how or at what place we can uh, you can say represent the state a on this temperature enthalpy diagram can anybody say because temperature is 0 degree so it will be located at this point so it is point a because Temperature is zero degree Celsius. Now let us heat the water at zero degree centigrade, right? So uh, what will happen? It will be converted, or sorry, it will be heated, and the temperature of water will become saturation temperature, and that liquid is known as the saturated liquid. Now let us draw it on temperature enthalpy diagram. How we can represent state B on temperature enthalpy diagram? as the heat is supplied slowly slowly temperature increases from 0 degree to saturation temperature so heat increases temperature also increases so it will be inclined line and at point b the temperature is saturation temperature and this is known as the heating of water this is the line indicates that this much amount of heat is supplied to water so enthalpy of water increases and increase in volume of water is negligible that is vw plus delta only and at that temperature at that point temperature is saturation temperature and it is also known as the boiling point temperature t set in degree celsius or t set in kelvin as the pressure increases t set also increases Water at state B is known as saturated water. Enthalpy of saturated water, it is known as the sensible heat of water, HF or capital HF, and it is denoted or it is a uh, termed here. So this is the enthalpy, or the this is the total heat content supplied to water, so that. Water temperature increase from zero degree centigrade to saturation temperature. HF indicates the specific enthalpy, means per unit kilogram of water, and capital HF 
denotes the total enthalpy for all quantity of water. It can be calculated using this equation. M C P delta T. Mass of water, C P of water, T B minus T A. Temperature at B point minus temperature at A point. Now we know that temperature at B point is saturation temperature. So it is T saturation. And temperature of A is 0 degree. So it is 0. So it is capital HF. That is the total enthalpy of saturated water. If we have to calculate the specific enthalpy of saturated water, then equation is small hf, that is equals to Cpw multiplied by Tb minus Ta, where Tb is T saturated minus 0. Now what is Cp of water? That is specific heat of water and it is a constant value, 4.187 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Volume of saturated water. Vf is considered as a volume of saturated water in meter cube, capital Vf. And if it is specific volume, that is small Vf, and the unit is meter cube per kg. Now, when we continue to heat the steam at point B, that is saturated liquid, then what will happen? As we have discussed, partially some water will be converted into steam, and at point C, there will be mixture of water and steam, and that is known as the wet steam. But temperature of steam will remain same, that is the saturation temperature. Now let us represent this on the temperature enthalpy diagram. How we can draw, or at what point we can draw C, whether it is vertical line, whether it is inclined line, whether it is horizontal line, or whether it is any other line. Yes, it is horizontal line because temperature is constant, saturation temperature is constant and that is point number C. So now actual formation of steam starts, no change in temperature of mixture of water and steam. Piston moves upward, volume increases and enthalpy also increases. Here you can see volume of uh, you can say mixture of water and steam has increased and enthalpy at point C again has increased. It is known as the wet steam because it is a mixture of water and steam at point C and due to that it is known as the wet steam. Dryness fraction of wet steam. X is known as the dryness fraction of wet steam which is defined as the ratio of mass of dry steam in a sample of wet steam divided by total mass of wet steam. Means ultimately it is a percentage of dry steam in the mixture of wet steam. And that is indicated by the ratio dryness fraction. And it is symbolized as X. So X is equals to mass of dry steam divided by mass of wet steam. But wet steam have both the thing, water and steam both. So you can say, Mass of dry steam divided by mass of dry steam plus mass of water. Specific enthalpy of wet steam, that is kilojoule per kg. Right? So initially at up to point B, enthalpy is HF. And at point C, total enthalpy is HW, H wet. So how to calculate H wet? H wet is equals to HF plus something. So HF plus heat supplied from point B to point C and that is equals to X into HFG where X is the dryness fraction. So H wet that is specific enthalpy in the unit kilojoule per kg is HF plus X into HFG. Specific volume of wet steam meter cube per kg V wet. So V wet it means wet steam have two things. One is water, one is steam. So it is a summation of two things. X into Vg plus 1 minus X into Vf. But 1 minus X into Vf is very, very, very small as compared to X into Vg. So we can write V wet, that is specific volume of wet steam as X into Vg. Now if we continue to heat, beyond point C, then what will happen? Yes, 100% water will be converted into steam 
and that point is known as point D and that steam is known as a dry steam or a dry and saturated steam. But mind well, temperature remains constant, that is saturation temperature. Now let us denote this point number D on temperature enthalpy diagram. Yes, so point D will be located in which uh, direction? Vertical, horizontal, inclined, curve? Yes, it will be again horizontal, that is point number D, because saturation temperature is constant. And at that point, totally the cylinder is filled up with the steam. So water is completely converted into steam and it is known as the evaporation. And this is the enthalpy supplied from point B to point D. Enthalpy of steam increases, piston moves upward, volume of steam also increases to Vg. Temperature of steam remains constant, as already we have discussed. And it is known as the dry and saturated steam or it is known as the dry steam. Specific enthalpy of dry and saturated steam. So it is up to point B, it is HF and between B and D, the enthalpy given is HFG. So what is total enthalpy given from A to D? It is HF plus HFG and also it is known as the HG. So enthalpy of dry steam is equals to HF plus heat supplied from B to D and it is HFG. So it is HF plus HFG that is equals to HG. Specific volume of dry and saturated steam. So it is Vg meter cube per kg. So that is the volume. Now if we continue to heat beyond point D, what will happen? Now the temperature of steam will increase and temperature of steam will be more than the saturation temperature and this kind of steam is known as the superheated steam. Now let us represent point E on temperature enthalpy diagram. So that is this. When steam is heated further beyond point D, its temperature starts increasing like this and it is point E. It is known as the superheating and at point E temperature is known as the superheated temperature that is T sup. Temperature at E is known as T sup and volume at E is known as the V sup. It is known as the superheated steam, specific enthalpy of superheated steam. So it is H sup and how it is a summation of A to B that is HF, B to D, HFG and D to E. So H sup is equals to HF plus HFG plus heat supply from D to E and that is equals to HF plus HFG plus Cp of steam into Te minus Td, temperature at point E minus temperature at point D, where Cp of steam is constant and that is 2.1 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. What is the temperature at E? T sup. What is the temperature at D? T set. So we can write down H sup is equals to HF plus HFG plus Cp of steam into bracket T sup minus T set. Specific volume of superheated steam that is V sup and that can be calculated using the equation V by T at state E equal to V by T at state D. So at state E what is the volume that is V sup at T it is T sup then V at D is Vg and T at D is T set. So it is V sup by T sup is equals to Vg by T set. So V sup is equals to Vg multiplied by T sup divided by T set. Kindly note that here temperature must be in Kelvin. Thank you.